streaming. What's up, everyone? I just said to Tom, he's over here. I said, I haven't done a live stream in so long. It's freaking me out. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I, th I decided to go on live here Friday afternoon, Atlanta time. Uh, I was uh, been, been driving Layla to school over the past couple. I always drive Layla to school, but she's like, are you going to play music? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want to hear? I don't know, stuff that I haven't heard. So I made a playlist of uh, music, post-grunge music, call it. She knows gr grunge really well. So I call post-grunge post essentially um, 1994 to, to 1999, that time period, which is a great, great time period. Uh, what happened to music between 1994? A lot of stuff happened to music. If you go back and look at videos of people walking around at concerts any time in that time period, you will notice one major thing. They are not looking at cell phones. They are engaged in the music. They are moshing. They are doing, doing all these different things than they do today. That's a huge, huge difference. Um, uh, so I thought about this. Okay, there's so much... Um, music from that time period that uh, that I'm even thinking of stuff that's that's on here right now that didn't even make my list that is definitely what I would call um, what I would call post grunge and um, I just just from seeing from seeing stuff on here things that people literally put in here right now of, of th songs like, yeah, okay, yeah, oh, that was good. This is basically the, the time period where I was a guitar teacher in Atlanta. These are the songs that people came in and asked. Now, obviously, people wanted to come in and learn Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and all those kind of songs, Alice in Chains. They wanted to learn those songs, but a lot of them wanted to learn songs that were on the radio at that time period. Um... And this was a, a huge range of artists of all different genres of music, hard, like heavy music, you know, the beginnings of um, bands like Tool, bands like Korn, uh, and then other bands. I'm going to play some of these other bands that, that happened. I'm going to kind of skip around in the, in the late 90s. Uh, so one of the bands that, uh, one of the songs that I played Layla is this, which is one of my favorites from this band. This is a uh, Third Eye Blind Motorcycle Drive-By. This came out 1997. Summertime and the wind is blowing outside in the hotel scene, I don't know what I'm doing in this city. The sun is always in my eyes It crashes through the windows And I'm sleeping on the couch When Great I came record. to visit you That's when I knew That I could never have you I knew that before you did Still I'm the one who's stupid And there's this burn like there's always been Ooh, so good I've never been so alone And I've never been so alive this is a view So of one of the songs that I love of, One of the things I love about this song eyes and you don't mind. Is the way that it builds Say the world that doesn't fit with you. I don't believe you. You're so serene. The melody, beautiful melody. You'll access on until you're guiltless and free. I hope you take a piece of me with you. And there's things I would Baseline. Like to do that you don't believe in. I would like to build something, but you never see it happen. And then and it is burning like there's always been. There are so many good notes. I've never been so alone. 
People were like, who is this? I've never been so alive. That is a great song, Motorcycle Drive-By. To me, that's the best song on that particular record. Another huge artist. Now, I was going to play something off Alanis' first record, but I thought... I love the drum loop in this so much. How about getting off of these antibiotics? How about stopping Now, when you hear the loop start, there's a little gap in it every time, which I think is amazing. Listen. How about them trying to spin? Right there. Another great song of that era is a song that um, that I played for Layla, uh, the Brad Meldow version of that. I had Brad Meldow in the studio this past week, and um, she asked me about this song. This is, of course, the Verve. This particular record I bought eight times because I kept losing it. There was a DJ on, I think it was Sean Demery on this 99X year who played it eight times in a row. He's like, I love this song. This also has Drugs Don't Work, Sonic, um, Lucky Man, oh my god, amazing record. I can just listen to this record. There are so many great songs on it. It absolutely blows me away. Uh, let's see here. Another great post-grunge band. Incubus. is a killer song okay here's another one now i played this for dylan because i was like hey 
You should check out this band. The singer was, I think, 15. It's from the first Silver Chair record. It's 12 o'clock and it's a wonderful day. I know. And then there's another, this is the 45 second pre-chorus. Great drum fill. Thank you, Matthew. I love this. Okay, another band that I've never talked about on this channel. I've been listening to this record forever. Bush. I went to see Bush play at the Hard Rock with five people in the mid 90s. And there was, there was four people there, I swear to God. Listen to the drums. Great room sound. This came out in 94, I think. Who would ever have an intro this long nowadays, right? One minute. I was thinking about this. The um, and th this is a this is kind of a thing. It was difficult to find people that did great sounding distortion guitars in the mid '90s. To me, this is a this is a thing um, that that song to me is is very. Um, uh, the guitars are just not quite, they don't have the mid-range to them that they need, right? So so there was, I, I always felt like there was, um, there was a real discrepancy in the way that, that music was recorded then. A lot of the bands, uh, they weren't, they weren't heavy. The guitar sounds weren't heavy, but here's a band who has incredible guitar sounds. This is an amazing sounding record. This is failure. Let's see these guitars here. So heavy. This is that snare. Ken Andrews. Then. 
love that song, Stuck on You. Amazing song. This entire record, this failure record, is really, really, really great. Uh, another band that I thought was kind of before their time that um, this song is a great song. This is Hum. How many of you remember Hum? This is the, the era of long intros. Like what? This is on the radio. She's out back counting stars. You could never get away with this now. She's out back counting stars. A lot of people, so I saw in the comments here, a lot of people thought this was Smashing Pumpkins. I don't know why. It doesn't sound anything like Billy Corgan. I think it's really because of the, the riff. The, the riff is really great. She's not at work. She's not at school. She's not in bed. I think I finally broke her. I bring home everything I want. Of course, there were other... Uh, there was other music that was going on in the mid-90s. It was completely different, right? A lot of great female artists. Sarah McLaughlin. This is off uh, Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. This tune, Wait. Listen to the difference in the recording quality of this compared to everything that we've heard, with maybe the exception of, with the exception of failure. Under a blackened sky, far beyond the glaring streetlights, sleeping on empty dreams, the vultures lie. This is the song. It's a, I think it's the second track on the uh, Fumbling Towards Ecstasy, Sarah McLaughlin record, which is one of my absolute favorite, favorite records. Incredibly great record. Another big song that my dear friend Tim Pierce played on. Little did I know at the time. And I give up forever to talk. Know that you feel me somehow. I feel like this is so You're present. Closest to heaven that I'll ever be, and I don't wanna go home right now. And all I could taste is this moment. All I can breathe is great snare life. sound. And sooner or later it's over. I just don't want to miss. Tim has a great video. Tim Pierce, for those of you that know Tim Pierce, I know you all know Tim. He's been on my channel a million times. But Tim has a great video about recording that song. He did a lot of the parts on there. That mandolin part, I mean, a lot of the guitar parts. That's, that's all Tim there, and that's absolutely phenomenal. Okay, here's another song from the mid-'90s. This is by one of my favorite producers of that era who did two records back-to-back. Counting Crows from a perfect album covering the satellites. 
It's, it's it's absolutely astounding. I'll tell you another record that was done by the same producer and they were made back to back is this record. Foo Fighters, Color and the Shape. There's so many big hits on this song that I love, but this tune is, um, I really feel like he's channeling Kurt. That to me is a, um, is, it just sounds like, like a tribute to Kurt, to Kurt's quiet singing that he does on Something in the Way or um, on Polly. It, it just sounds like Dave is is really channeling that for this vocal performance, which I think is incredibly good. Uh, Marcelo, can we do this for the next five hours? <laughs> yes, we can. We can actually. By the way, if you go to Rick Bia Rick, uh, what is it? BeattoGuitar.com, Tom. I have my arpeggio course on sale again, seventy five bucks. Um, I'd be uh, I, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't say that. But uh, you can get it there, beatoguitar.com. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I want to say a couple things here before we go on. Right now, this month and last month are the two biggest months I have ever had on this channel. The most subscribers, the most views by a lot. It's about 30 million views on the channel. Massively big videos. I don't know why, after seven and a half years, this is when YouTube channels are supposed to, you know, when YouTubers are supposed to have hit their peak and going down. And and uh, if you don't subscribe to my second channel, Rick Beato 2, which is not new, it's been actually, um, I, I upload it on, on it almost every day. I have original content. I have some of my favorite clips from, from these long videos that I've done so people can kind of get them bite-sized versions of them. Uh, and subscribe to Rick Beata too, also. So this has really been a big, big, uh, big time in the channel. Um, now, there were some uh, bands, some of my favorite bands, some of my favorite people that released records in the mid-90s. In my interview with Robert DeLeo, one of his songs, and he demonstrates his bass line. Listen. If you ever seen that interview, he plays along with this. And 
here. Best bass line of the, of the 90s. Best rock bass. One, one of the best rock bass lines of all time. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, that is one of the best bass lines ever in rock music, period. Man, that kills. That kills. Okay, here is a song that um, was actually produced by the same producer, uh, and it's a Pearl Jam song from that era that I think is amazing. Listen. <laughs> says man that sounds damn good it does Gotta pause after that. That's ridiculous. Man, there were some amazing, the grunge bands that, that did records. I say post grunge, I, I say post 1994. Another record. Burden in my hand. Off down in the upside, sound garden. Oh. I get, I'm getting depressed. You know, honestly, I get uh, I get a little bit bummed out when I hear that. Um, okay, another great song. This is like post the big records. This is a um, another one of my Oasis songs. It's kind of off the beaten track, but it was a single on "Be Here Now."
I love the long intros, right? Come on, you know this song at all? These are all before your time, right? What year were you born? Tom was born in 97. Adrian. So we're like one minute into the song. I love the drum sounds like that. Whoa. I love the helicopter in the video, Jeff says. I do too. Great video. You gotta love those mid 90s Oasis songs. Here's another band. Um, another band from England. This is Embrace. Love this band. You might not know this band, but you should. It's called All You Good Good People. I feel like I'm at something you always say you need more time. Well, I'll stay right here and I'll wait for good until I find a love worth mine. You can hear the chorus on this. Someday you've got to come. It hurts me when I read the sign. It's so all loud and clear that I make you glad if I'm leaving first and crying. All you can get people listen to me. Embrace, British band. Called all you good, 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 all you good, good people. And then, of course, we have somebody's like, why haven't you ever played Blur? Shaved by a jumbo it jet. Wasn't easy, but nothing it ends. No. When I'm in the middle, I'm in the so I did a gig opening for Blur in a band in 1992 in Philadelphia at the what was it called? Art theater? No, the um, maybe it was art theater. It was right next to J.C. Dobbs. It was a theater, and um, that's all I remember. And it was amazing. Okay, another classic record. One of the best records of the '90s. One of the most talented songwriters. Woo! 
Okay, so you guys know this. You know this tune. Last goodbye, Jeff Buckley. Now, you know this song, Tom. Oh, yeah. Now, you see, Tom's born in 1997, but he knows that song. I met Jeff Buckley in 1996. I told this story on, when I did a, 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 a What Makes a Song Great. On uh, I actually did it on the song Vancouver that was off his, um, his uh, record that came out after he passed away. It was from one of his demos. Um, and um, I met Jeff in 1990 five here in Atlanta maybe 96 I can't remember I think he passed away in 97 um he was uh came into this bar with a friend of mine who introduced me to him and I um talked to him for about an hour and a half or so incredibly interesting guy a lot of people don't know that he went to GIT as a guitar major and my dear friend, Alan Hines, who I hung out with when I was in L.A. last week, uh, last week at the NAMM show, was friends with Jeff. And Jeff was an was a, um, incredibly good fusion guitar player. Did you know that, Tom? No. He played Alan Holdsworth solos. Jeff was a shredder, shredder guitar player that could play really intricate guitar stuff okay I'm, i want to try and get um some of the people that jeff went to school with at git on here um and talk about that time period but um really really amazing what a talented guy okay another one of my favorite records of that era and everybody knows this band is uh i always talk about swerve driver oh my god I can't listen to Swerve Driver enough. I had Adam Franklin, the singer, on the channel. Right three years ago, I did an interview with them that was so fun. This is off their Objective Seed Reservation. If you go to Spotify, it says 2008. This record came out in 1996. Ejector Seat Reservation, Swerve Driver. This song, check out the chords, the, the, the changes in this. I love this. Listen to this. Okay, now there are just there's 
so many great songs from this time period. I didn't even, uh, we've got No Doubt. I don't think I've ever played No Doubt on here. Let's get into it a little bit. that people asked to come. People would come in and I taught all these songs, all of them. Oh my God, I have a list here that's got, I just, I put together a list here of 38 songs in, you know, five minutes or so. I could go, I, I could make this list. I put a, I put a Spotify playlist here uh, with 38 songs that, that I, ju I just saw, I was like, well, okay, what songs did I teach? Now, some of these songs I did not, I didn't teach The Other Jesus by Swerve Driver, or, uh, but a lot of these other songs I taught. Oh my God, I taught so many of these songs. I taught songs like this. Right? Let me get into it a little bit. Now listen to the sound of that. Okay, so when I was teaching songs like this, I was thinking about this. Somebody asked me about um, when I went and interviewed Maynard in, um, I think I was talking about how on TikTok the other night or something. Uh, when I finished my interview with Maynard, it was in um, Jerome, South, uh, um, Jerome, Arizona. Is that right? Mike, you're on here. Is it Jerome or was it? I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm right about that. It was at one of Maynard's restaurants. And, uh, and Maynard talks really quietly incredibly quietly and uh and mike was mike was about mike who works with me he goes on all these things yes it's jerome so <laughs> mike was probably five feet from us and he said he's like i couldn't hear anything he said <laughs> i was like that's maynard talks so quietly it's really amazing and um and so as soon as we finished the interview, oh, Maynard was so cool. He's like, can I give you a tour of the town? I was like, absolutely. And I got into his Jeep and we're driving around. It was beautiful there, uh, driving around town. And I, I wanted to just, um, I wanted to get my camera out of my phone and just go like this. And it was like, just to remember Maynard driving me around town and giving me a tour. It was so cool. Uh, brought me up to his winery and everything. I mean, it was really a highlight of, uh, of last year. That was so fun. And um, uh, is that the tool guy? Yes, Maynard. Maynard James Keenan. Uh, that was a fun, fun time. I'm, I... I I want to have Maynard back on the channel again at some point. He's what what an incredible musician, singer, genius. Uh, so there's many other songs. I didn't even t touch stuff. I mean, I have Seal on here. A lot of there's plenty of songs I didn't play that are songs that I've actually made videos on. Um, that are on here. I have Corn on here. I've got Deftones. I've got. Uh, um, I have a lot of things on here. I have Lisa Loeb, Stay, the song I knew Lisa Loeb back then. Um, uh, let's see, Rick, you need to uh, listen to Tom, Tim Christensen. Um, thank you for all the, the super chats, you guys. This has been amazing. If you'd like to see me do some of these things uh, to, to actually 
hone in on so, some of these other songs and talk about them. Because there's a lot of songs. I could actually narrow it down. I could I could do just British bands of from 1994, you know, Portishead and, and Supergrass, you know, 1994 to 1999. Radiohead, I could do, uh, I didn't even play Radiohead on here. I could do, you know, Southern California bands. I could do, the, you know, from this time period, there was a lot of incredibly great music that happened in the late 90s. Amy Winehouse, uh, Back to Black, I was going to play. Just so many things. Torn by Natalie Imbruglia, which is a killer song. She didn't write the song. Uh, it was actually by a band called Edna Swap. But um, uh, Queensryche, I see Portishead on here. Kula Shaker, great, great bands that, that were happening in the 90s. Uh, Arpeggio Course, $75 on sale. You want to support the channel, that's how you can do it. Um, got more videos coming out. Got some killer interviews coming out in the next few days. Remember to hit subscribe here. Hit subscribe at Rick Beata too. You guys are amazing. Sorry it's been two weeks or three weeks since I've been on live. But, you know, got to take some time off. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.